Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I have my brother-in-law Landon with me here today. How's it going? <laughs> and he's going to share some of his story, his experiences with depression. Yeah, so it kind of all started when I was like 12, 13 years old. I was diagnosed with ADD. Okay. So I had no clue what was going on at that point. I think it was sixth, seventh grade. And the medication in particular that was supposed to help with my ADD, one of the major side effects was depression. And so I was on a super high dosage, well, probably way higher than I should have been at that age. And I became super depressed around like eighth grade, where at a point like I would only eat like one meal a day. I would never talk with anybody at school. And I'm a pretty social, happy guy. Yeah. So super, super different, where I just felt uncomfortable talking with people. I wouldn't want to eat. I wouldn't want to interact with people. And there'd be times where I would go a full on week without saying anything to a single person, which is wow. super not me and He's so a very friendly guy i try to be at least <laughs> so that continued on through high school it got a little better in high school because i was growing and by that time the dosage amount was probably more appropriate for for my weight for my size that kind of stuff right. so it got to be a little bit better but it was still the effects were still there if that made sense and so i kept growing kept kind of having issues nothing dramatic except for actually i take that back it was pretty dramatic in high yeah. <laughs> High school's a hard time for everybody, just hormones, chemical imbalances, all that kind right. of stuff. So transitioning over with high school from that eighth grade, it was really hard for me personally because I was from a really small middle school, graduating class of like 30 kids. Wow. All went to a different high school but me. Right. I went to one high school, they all went to another. So I was just felt super uncomfortable at the time with where I was going in school. I was playing soccer competitively too. And on my team, I was constantly being bullied because I was the only white kid on the team and the only member of the church. My coach would rail, yell racial slurs at me. Kids would like kick me, beat me up after practice. Like, kind of like the sand lies, <laughs> kind of stupid, like, Just, like from an yeah. 80s movie, but it seriously right. was like that. So I personally was at the time I felt like I had no escape. So I would go to school, I would be depressed. And after school I had soccer where I'd be beaten up and like harassed and then I would come home and there would be some times I would try to talk to my parents about it, but obviously I wasn't the best at vocalizing everything because I felt like I couldn't even speak with people. So my parents, it was brand new field for them as well, completely different territory. They didn't really know how to help me out. So they're just like, oh, sorry, soccer's rough. You'll do good. Right, you know, you'll be right. fine. It's just like I couldn't do anything. Felt no escape at home, school or extracurricular activities, anything like that. And so that kind of kept rolling on, and that's when I started to become suicidal. I started doing really in-depth research on the church's standpoint on suicide and how that looked like in the afterlife and what it would be, what it would mean for my internal family, things kind of along those lines. Mm. And as I was doing that research, I was really hard to feel the spirit at times. There'd be like, the way I described as little bursts of light where I would feel the spirit, and then it'd be like dark months and months and months and months years even and all throughout high school i was praying every night for some sort of relief through this granted at the time i didn't know i was diagnosed with depression that would have helped a so, lot <laughs> so you still had the ad add diagnosis yes. mm -hmm. no depression no depression diagnosis okay so no. everyone assumed probably your parents it was just like was teenage hormone stuff plus yeah. the add yeah, I think okay. I think that's what they kind of chalked it all up to. And to be fair, I hadn't had like any exposure to what depression looked like. Nobody in my family had had it, like cousins, right. sisters, siblings. I had no clue what it looked like. So I know only now looking back that that's actually what right. it was, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I was going praying for years for the same thing. And then I remember one specific day I was planning to take my life. And I just felt prompted to read the scriptures. Hold on, pull it up, whatever one it was. Awesome. And it's DNC 122, verses 7 and 8. This is when Joseph Smith was in jail. And he felt like he was defeated. All of, his, all of the followers of the church were being massacred, were being hunted down, persecuted. And he was praying to God for any kind of relief and asking why this is happening. And this is the answer he gave him. It says, and if thou should be cast into the pit or into the hands of murderers and the sentence of death passed upon thee, if thou be cast into the deep, if the billowing surge conspire against thee, 
if fierce winds become thine enemy, and if heavens gather all blackness, and all the elements combine to hedge up the way, and above all, if the very jaws of hell shall gape open the mouth wide after thee, know thou, my son, that all these things shall give thee experience, and shall be for thy good. The Son of Man hath descended below them all, art thou greater than he. So I felt that was like a slap in the face. Like That was the first time in like three years that I felt the Spirit that strong when I was reading the scriptures. And that's when I kind of made a commitment to myself and kind of God, because I wasn't sure I was going to serve a mission, because I honestly didn't know if I was going to live to that point to right. serve a mission. I said, okay, I'm not going to live my life for myself. These things that are happening to me, this severe depression, everything that I've been going through, is supposed to be for the benefit of other people. So that's when I promised that I would serve a mission, not because I wanted to, not for my family, not for friends, but because I know through these experiences that I could help other people. That's great. And missions are obviously rough. <laughs> Still dealt with a lot Thank of depression on my yeah, mission. Sure. Overall, we came through in the end. I finally, first time I went to therapy was on my mission, actually. Cool. And oh my goodness, life changing, night and day difference. Agreed. And the I finally got me. medicated, finally got therapy, okay. and I was like, is this how I'm supposed to feel? So like, you were whoa. diagnosed on your mission then? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you said like you felt that your depression was to benefit other people. Did you mm -hmm. see that on your mission? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, because I served in Baltimore. There's a lot of rough things going around, obviously, because I was in a lot of slums and harder right. areas of Baltimore. So those people had a very rough go at life in particular. So I felt like I was definitely able to help at least somewhat relate to them. Right. And to be able, like it says in the scriptures, to at least succor to what their needs might be. And to be able to tell them how the gospel has benefited my life, how it changed my life personally, and how I knew it could help them because it helped Good. me. Yeah. Good. I love that. Um, I'm curious, are you on medication now? I am, yeah. For ADD and depression? So I don't really take my one? ADD medicine anymore okay. because it's, it's kind of weird. I feel like once I got into college, I guess I still technically have ADD, but I didn't feel like I had a need for the medication anymore just because I felt like the side effects were not worth what I was getting out of it, if that made sense. Yeah. So. I feel fine without it, Good. but I'm taking my depression medicine, anxiety medicine too, so Good. helps a lot. Good. For sure. yeah. Yeah. What have you found like coping skills for ADD, for depression? Oh, this is one thing I've talked with my therapist about. My therapist on the mission, I went to the mission nurse, first of all, and bless her soul, but it was not helping me personally. So I had to go to a regional specialist in Washington, DC, very tough loving nurse, which is what nice. I needed though. because. Cool. I was very in my own head, like, I, I told my therapist, I don't know what thoughts are mine and what's depression. I don't know what's real. I don't know if what I'm observing is actually the spirit in do, like talking to me or if it's just like my mental illness. It's totally right. whack. And she <laughs> was like, quote, shut up. I'm going to tell you <laughs> like, what's right. But I was I like, oh, that. shoot. Like, but it worked. Like, it was yeah. fantastic. And so that's that's still a challenge I have from time to time is deducing is this real that I'm perceiving or is this like twisted and altered from my mental illness and it's hard it, like yeah. sometimes yeah. seeing what I guess the discrepancies between the two so obviously my wife helps a lot with that my parents at times whenever I talk with them help a lot with that because now they're a lot more exposed to it now they're more aware about right. these things so it's able to help for sure good um i think i think that's a really good point that you can't tell what no. reality is like if it's in your head if it's actually a real concern and other people feel that way too and i like how you said that like close family probably friends you know just like mm -hmm. being able to kind of hash it out with them they have your best interest but they can 100%. also see things kind of like outside of the realm of mental illness. I talk to Emma about it all the time, Yeah, actually. <laughs> she's able, to, she's just like, no, stop. Like, that's <laughs> not stop. real. That's not how it is. And I'm just like, okay. Yeah. And I'm working on just like, okay, just drop the ball, let it that's, go. Like, that's really good. Yeah. That takes a lot of work, I think, it, it, for oh sure. Gosh, yeah, a lot, yeah. actually. So what do you feel like kind of flares the mental health now? Mm -hmm. I mean, because you've known you've had it, but you still have it, obviously. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, medication 
helps. Helps a lot. Um, you've been to therapy, but mm -hmm. obviously there are going to be times that still Absolutely. you feel it come on. Um, what are some of those times? Um, it's like what I do when I'm having like those moments where I feel like, man. Yeah, like I guess coping skills and also maybe what are some of the things triggers. that, yeah, triggers. Okay, yeah, school. <laughs> school. College. School's rough. College is yeah. rough. It definitely is one. And just the stresses of everyday life, I think, For being sure. young, broke college students yes. is just finances is always a main concern that comes up. College is always going to be rough. I'm in my senior year right now, so all the classes are upper division, more difficult. And it's at that point where I'm like, I'm like what am I doing with my yeah, life? I have right. no clue, but we're making our we way through it. <laughs> so those definitely spike. My depression and anxiety kind of comes in waves yeah. as it goes, you know. And to be able to help cope with those things, usually I have like a little system I have to go through. I need some alone time at first. And Emma's aware of it. My friends are aware of it. I just need to de-stress doing whatever might be working out. Working out has helped me a lot personally, Good. going to the gym, uh, whether it's just like sitting down, watching TV, or just like playing video games for like 30 minutes or something like that. And then after I kind of brought myself down, I just need to get myself out of that headspace right. to level myself. Then I'm able to talk about it with my wife or friends or sure. family or whatever. So talking's helped a lot. For sure. Mm -hmm. And that probably didn't happen until like... No, not at all. Right? No. I didn't want to talk with anybody, yeah. honestly, because I felt like, to be fair, it was probably feeble attempts to talk to my parents. They didn't understand, and I couldn't, like, articulate what I was going through. So I was like, okay, they're not there for me, right. which, obviously, hindsight's way better. They, of course, were there to help with whatever. It was just a totally new playing field that we didn't know about. But now that I feel like I have a support system around me that is aware about it, it is a lot more helpful. Cool. Um, what advice would you give to teenagers specifically oh, boy. <laughs> do you have advice yeah being a teenager is rough especially nowadays i have a younger brother that's 16 in high school and i'm like holy cow the crap that he deals with on a daily basis i couldn't even imagine dealing with when i was in high school um would be my advice would be to talk with somebody i know it might seem like they won't understand and they won't get it but even if you're just trying your best and putting your best effort forward to talk with anybody, whether it's, let's say, a parent, a friend, a leader in the church, or just praying a bishop, whoever, right? Uh, it will definitely help because they have a lot more life experience. Whether it be in this field or not, they can at least maybe point you in the right direction to be able to receive some type of help. And maybe it won't fully relieve everything. I, I wouldn't say there's been a point in my life where I felt like 100% perfect right. at all times. It's always looming. It's yeah. always kind of there, yeah. but at least it's somewhat of a relief, if that makes sense. Great. Um, yeah. Give me an example, you, you know, talking to adults, you said you tried, mm -hmm. but you didn't quite know how. Like, give me an example for a teenager that would be helpful. Yeah, I think for me specifically, I would like go talk to my dad and be like, school is hard, soccer's right. hard. <laughs> yeah. That isn't a lot to go on, like, yeah, but like, I was like, how do I articulate this? I think more telling them, like, this isn't normal. I think I started to notice when things that I loved became not fun anymore for me. I didn't enjoy right. them at all. So telling your parents, maybe, or a leader, whoever it might be, more of the specifics, like, this isn't just regular me feeling, like, upset. Right. This is something else. And I know it might be hard to articulate because it's brand new feelings that you've never felt, Definitely. you never think thought of before but just do your best to talk about like this is more than the average that i'm feeling i, I don't know that. that's what yeah, i would say I think personally that's great. But yeah. i think that that that's a really common <laughs> depression mm -hmm. symptom and maybe a little different from adhd is that like you lose interest right and yeah there's a lot of times i think that add may like drive you mm -hmm. and motivate you right maybe you're not as focused but you're motivated and depression you're not completely <laughs> opposite yeah, yeah. um sure. what advice do you have for parents of teenagers oh, or young boy. adults if they're not Good communicating mm -hmm. 
their feelings, which they probably aren't. No, because they're probably not. Territory. Or not effectively, yeah. I'll be honest. Like, yeah. Maybe what are some of the red flags and what are what's some advice that you would give to parents? Some red flags is definitely change in personality. Like I said, I'm a pretty happy-go-lucky guy and I right. totally shut down. Loss of interest in things that they once loved, whether it be like sports. I loved soccer. I honestly still to this day get anxiety whenever I play soccer, which is super weird. It's like traumatizing it's to me to like, even it's just, yeah. just like for fun, whatever. So lost in interest to things. i um, trying to think what else. I would say those are the main two that yeah. I'd probably talk about with parents though. That's the thing I would maybe say to look out for and just be very sensitive to whatever your kids might say. They might say, I'm just having a hard time at school. School sucks. I know it kind of, I don't want to say probe, <laughs> but maybe dig a little deeper yeah. into it and say, why right. does it suck? Why does it feel this way? And if a lot of the answers are coming back to emotional things, that might be a red flag there as opposed to outside forces. Cool. If that makes sense. I really sense. like yeah. that. Yeah. The internal, maybe how they're perceiving <laughs> things versus the external. I think that that probably is a lot more common than we talk about, you know, because parents... <laughs> see the problems their kids are going through and it's like oh it'll go away it's not that big of a deal but it's if a life. kid yeah. mm -hmm. has emotional um problems if they have mental illness then whether or not it's a big deal long term it may be perceived as something sure. really serious yeah i would 100 agree yeah did your parents ever know you were suicidal um i only told them on my mission Okay. Once I was diagnosed, because like I said, on my mission, I was very depressed. I wasn't suicidal quite to that point, but it was okay. like you very were, close there. Really, it was yeah. very close. It was really rough. And so once I finally was going to therapy, I told my parents, because there was one point I was like, I need to come home from my mission. Like, right. I can't do this. Yeah. And that's the point I told my parents. I When I was in high school, I was suicidal. I was depressed. And it came to a shock to them right. because they had no idea yeah, you know it's so a completely different world for them so yeah but i eventually did let them know when i was on my mission cool well thanks for watching this video if you want more content about mental illness chronic pain anything like that please subscribe and hit the like button we would love to hear your thoughts and it has a youtube account so if you have any questions <laughs> for him personally it's all my it's all my college assignments but i do have a youtube account <laughs> yeah you can stock his college assignment account but if you have any questions for him leave them down below and i'm sure he will respond oh i will <laughs> thanks for watching see ya